Good evening. It's Monday, May 20th, 2019. Call to order the Sutton School Committee meeting. First order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next order of business is the Citizens Forum. Seeing none, we'll move to the consent agenda. The minutes from May 6th, the bill schedules from May 9th and May 16th. And I believe, Pete, you were absent, so yep. you'll have to abstain from the minutes. I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item is the elementary school update with Ms. Harrison. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello. The first thing I think I'll go over is the handbook changes. Uh, most of them were revisions to wording and grammar and the like. The one I really want to focus on is the attendance because that had the most change. And you have it, happen to have it in front of you? Yep. So, we were fortunate enough to have a student support group this year where the counselors, the guidance counselors, uh, school psychologists, teachers, um, I'm sorry, not teachers, um, and um, principals met and the special ed director. And it was a really good committee that a lot has come out of it. One of the things we worked on was our concern over student attendance. So we decided to work on revamping the handbook, the wording in the handbook, which is what you see. So. Um, if you go down to just the two paragraphs and then the bullets and the next one where it talks about our goal is to drive the best possible educational growth, we added to that that we strongly discourage trips or vacations that do coincide with school. Um, if a student would be missing more than two days, we also added that we would like to have um, them let us know prior to the trip and complete out a form that we have made for that, that we did not have that before. Um, you know, a trip is very special and important for families, and that's an education in itself, and I understand that, but sometimes they're lengthy, and it does disrupt the educational process. Chronic absenteeism is um, defined by the United States Department of Education as failing to attend school with or without excuse for more than 10% of school days. While we have very good attendance, for the most part, we do have a few of those examples of students have been missed a lot of school. So we want to make sure this wording is um, the way we make our point across that it's very important to get your child to school, um, and we also address tardiness. Um, and if you go down, this wording for the guidelines for keeping sick children was in before, so you've seen that. And then absence due to vacation, again, was um, talked about because teachers do not have to provide the plans, um, but if um, it's not their responsibility ahead of time, some teachers like to do that. It's hard sometimes because they give them what they need to do and then they don't cover it in the class and the other child's already covered it. Although we do appreciate parents being that and students being responsible enough to try to get it done. Um, and so basically that's how we changed it. So we're hoping just to make the point that do your best to get to school and get to school on time. We do have, a, we do have an issue of chronic, chronic absenteeism in our district. Um, Does that cross all schools? Yeah. Yes. Yes. There's, there's, it, it, each school has a certain number of kids, and most of it stems around, there, there are some physical illness mm -hmm. situations, but a lot of it is um, social-emotional stress, mm -hmm. and there are now doctors giving notes that, excuse kids because they're having stress um, so we're looking at it as a as a group because in the news report card I, I think I've already mentioned this I was shocked that we didn't get any points because we had too many kids who were chronically absent it's not a lot of kids but percentage wise it's enough that it stands out so this is an attempt to tell families you got to get your child out of bed he's struggling get him to school keeping him home doesn't serve the child. Get them to school. We have guidance counselors at school. We have adjustment counselors at school. We've got to encourage them to get to school. Which reinforces all of what we've talked about 
through vision sure. committee and district learning about the importance of social emotional Correct. health, which is huge. Huge. You know, Especially uh, even in lower grades, you know, the fact that little kids are getting stressed out over MCAS. And that's why Maybe. when I talk in my yeah. report about the SEFT Foundation giving us a $15,000 grant for Breathe for Change to train 30 teachers and four teachers to take the 200 hour course to, to kind of have a district wide way of dealing with stress in school. So it's coming. But we, we need to send a strong message to parents that, you know, if you're missing 18 days of school, that, that's, that's a lot of time out of but school. the other message we're sending is that we're here to help. We're here to act as a support system, which is yeah. huge. Absolutely. And we have a wonderful support system, mm -hmm. I have to say. I go right. there every day. And right. We have and so I think that's just important many to reinforce. People wear many hats to help these students. And yeah, it's one thing to say, come to school. It's another thing to say, come to school. We want to help. Right. So that's great. Sorry. So that was the biggest change. Yeah. Do you have any questions about the handbook? Yeah. Okay, and it was signed by all of the school council members. And we had our last meeting um, in the beginning of May. You want to well, should we change that now? Should we vote on that first and then? Okay. I move to approve the changes to the elementary school handbook as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Now I was going to, uh, if you could refer to my strategic plan goals and the progress that has been made. I don't know if you had a chance to read it, so I won't really read through the whole thing. Um, again, the writing across the curriculum was um, our first goal, and really it's been exciting. Um, a writing <coughs> committee was formed and led by Jerry Goyette, the middle school principal, um, where teachers from grades K to 12 um, participated. Um, it was just really great to see what kindergarten teachers do and you'd be amazed all the way up through the older kids and I think ideas even themes were shared even though it would be maybe fourth grade and tenth grade you know type of thing so um, it was I had was able to attend those meetings and it was um, <coughs> I thought it was very powerful so that's out there I wouldn't have another year of this goal because we feel like it's come so far and actually significant progress has been made in my opinion but there's always more you can do. So um, vertical teams, they met um, during that time and we have lots and lots of writing samples. The teachers were really great about copying student work to show me what low stakes writing they've added to their curriculum um, and they already have been doing a lot. So it was a definite focus and again, it's a nice portfolio of writing from grades three to five and I'm sure all the others. Can you, for my benefit anyways, Help me understand the wording low stakes. That's a really great question. <laughs> so we do a lot of formal writing, like the students write persuasive essays and personal narratives and um, uh, fantasy stories and all kinds of stories that like you might have a yellow copy of where you have them edit it and then you'll have a peer edit or a teacher edit and then they do their final polished copy and they get a grade on it. The, low, the teachers are bombarded with grading and scoring. So the low stakes is an opportunity for teachers to have the kids write like a small moment story, which is just a quick story that could turn into one of those big pieces. But just to free write, the teachers don't have to grade it, and it's just, it could be a science journal, it could be a math journal, it could be um, a flip book, I don't know if you know what that is, with information in it. There's just so many opportunities for that, and I think the teachers really feel, um, almost felt like, oh wow, this is great, I can do all this writing, but I don't have to score or grade it. And the kids can just be free to write and not be marked like Ted had said earlier. So, is that helpful? Yes, very. I, I, I know when my kids saw it, the thing that I liked about it or appreciated as a parent, it seemed like it was writing without the, writing without it being work. Mm -hmm. It was just yeah, to write. For enjoyment. It was like it, like which was great. Writing yeah. equivalent. Yeah. And I think that actually helps the students grow as writers, mm -hmm. more than just being told this is what you're gonna write and how to do it. I think when you give them some um, freedom to have choice mm. in their writing, I think you'll see a lot of progress that they make. And if any of you are ever in the school and would like to see some of the samples, I'd be happy to share them with you. Thank you. Um, so the success was measured on that by um, um, teachers sharing like at least five to seven new low stakes writing activities, you know, random from each teacher to teacher. And they shared them with each other and at their vertical teams, like I said. So I thought that was a great goal for our district and it is um, one we'll continue with. Standard two, again, in order to teach all students, Sutton Elementary School will increase opportunities for student writing. So that's the student goal. 
and um, it's, it's pretty much the same stuff. Teachers met informally and formally to share model lessons and examples of low stakes items in all the areas of the curriculum, not just ELA. Um, and the success of that was measured by anecdotal evidence, students' work samples from throughout the year, and principal walkthroughs. So we had a lot of communication about it. And I come by my, to my office in the morning, and a teacher would have dropped off like seven samples of something. I just love seeing the kids' work. So, um, and standard three um, is our goal of communication, and that seems to I hope um, be strong in our school. Um, I use Blackboard Connect a lot and we have chalk talk three times a year i email every day um and some of these small moment paragraphs and stories were shared with parents and families through a we received a grant from the sutton cultural council and another one from the massachusetts cultural council to bring in john porcino he's a storyteller and writer and musician and he came in and he was able to spend five blocks of time at every in every class throughout the elementary school and the kids really loved it and he was working on personal narrative, but he did a lot of that small, low stakes, small moment writing to get to the final product that they had. And we, uh, that culminated in a celebration of writing where the families came in, who was really successful. We had him last year as well, I think even the year before. So it, it, the teachers have really enjoyed, he teaches them strategy, and as he says, I learned from them too, so. Um, and just more about the PD that, you know, we're providing time for the teachers um, we did have some teachers go to Boston. It was a reading, um, um, International Reading Association, a Massachusetts Reading Association um, conference, but they learned a lot of strategies for the writing as well because it ties together. So they came back with some good information for me for that, so that was good. Um, yeah, and 100% of the teachers are doing it, and I think that says a lot, and they're all into it. And for the last goal, I guess it's got that one. I just I wanted to give you some updates on other things that are going on. So the elementary school has, and the early learning center has formed a diversity council um, as a result of the work done on the district learning teams. Um, the group meets mainly monthly. It might be sometimes sooner and sometimes later. Um, they that group brought us Mr. Peace, which was um, funded by the PTO to, for an assembly on motivational speaking designed to address topics like bullying, diversity, kindness. Um, they also brought us a wonderful African cultural night where we celebrated the African culture and there was all kinds of activities, kid games coming from that country, food, music, um, you know, sports. And that was um, well, well received by everyone that was there and we're hoping that more people will catch on to it and come. There'll be another one in the fall of a, on a different country. So that's been a wonderful new council that has come to our school that I think has a lot of um, uh, vision for what we want to have in our school. Uh, and it's great because they're ELC and Sutton Elementary. Um, let's see. We also had the vision committee that our teachers and staff took, in, took uh, part in, and you know about that, and parents as well, and with a focus um, on the next five years. And one of the things that we had lists of what we wanted to see happen, the biggest one turned out to be uh, lower class size. So, and we have nice sizes for classes next year in the elementary school. Good. Uh, lastly, or not almost lastly. <laughs> um, no, I already told that about the handbook, so I don't have to say it. I wanna say this, excellent attendance from our students for MCAS, that's huge, because if they don't, they're not there, they have to make it up. We have no problem having them make it up, but it's nice when they're all there. And the report from the teachers that they, is that they really, really worked hard. So whatever the results are, they really, you know, we told them it's a report card on the school, no stress for you. It's not, a, you know, do your best, but they really, really worked hard. And I think that's about all I have for now. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? questions? Any questions for me? How's the facility? Excuse me? How's the facility? Does it enter your mind often or is it? The building? Yep. The building looks great. And when we have people come in from outside, which we have recently for a few events, they are very complimentary. They say, wow, you have a school like this? Coming from other schools, whether it be principals or someone come in like John Porcino, um, they are very complimentary. And um, I think Roger does a great job, or I know Roger does a great job to be sure it's, you know, and if, so, if they're b overly busy, maybe there's something that lapses, but you know, they get to find out about it and they fix it and whatever the case is. So very happy with that. And if you had um, just a little bit more money, 
the superintendent didn't cut, where, what would you be adding? Uh, probably a curriculum director. Because we have enough teachers at our grade levels. Uh, you know, that would be my first choice, second choice, maybe. I don't know. Health teacher. Oh, that's one of, yeah, that's another goal that I have. I'd like to add health to the cur curriculum, and it isn't going to happen for next year, but that's going to be one of my goals for next year, to have that in the, um, uh, put, in, put in for the following year, a health teacher. I think in this day and age, it's really important. I had talked to Ted about my ideas about that, and I think it would be great for both ELC and the elementary. You know, there's no, you can't start too young with the, what's yeah. going on now. Super. Yeah. Great. So, that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good night. See, you could have been done, but I know. I know. <laughs> and, uh, I was somewhere else. It's you. It is you. It is me. I'm moving over. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it's not really me. You like us? Yeah. 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 That's it. <laughs> no, it is me. It really is. Okay. Electrically charged. <laughs> is it well, the? Is it the cell phone? Sometimes we have interactions with cell phones. Into your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's like going through security. It's not a cell phone issue. <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep in my wallet. Really? Wow, this is it's just you, Jerry. It's just me, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm full of energy tonight. Um, so, a uh, few things to update you folks on. Um, as far as changes to the handbooks, we really looked over our tardiness and our absence and prearranged policies. Um, based on last year's ratings that when we looked at how we did as far as obtaining points, the real eye-opener was we got a zero for attendance. Chronic absenteeism. Hmm? Chronic absenteeism. Chronic absenteeism. So that, that was glaring to us and we had to do something about it. So when I ran the reports earlier, um, tardiness is not such a problem. Um, and Dan does a really nice job handling tardiness as far as, you know, on the fourth, this is what we do. On the fifth, this is what we do. So we kind of just tied it up a little bit tighter. Um, but for the absences, when I ran the report, it was kind of shocking. Um, 58 of our students are over 10 days when I ran the report. Absent. Absent. Mm -hmm. Yep, 58. That's, that's a lot of students and that's a lot of days. So what we did was we mirrored a little bit with what the high school does as far as their um, attendance policy. Obviously we can't take away credit. Um, and so what the school site council and I really felt was that, you know, for the most part, a lot of times this attendance policy is really driven by the parents. And so we need to partner with parents and that's why what we did and how we did it really mirrors trying to build a partnership with the parents. So like on the fourth, we call the parents. On the fifth, we call the parent meeting to come in and we talk about it and we put together maybe a possible contract. And then the sixth and anything after that, we are going to have parent meetings to really address that, hey, you know, it's hard enough being in the classroom and when you're not in the classroom you're not getting, you can make up all the work, but you're not getting that direct instruction. So that, that was the only changes to our handbook. It was just those two. All right. Um, then turning to- uh, You oh, know, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the changes to the middle school student handbook as presented. Second. So, any further discussion? Hang on, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Terrific. Okay. Thank you. Um, next, moving on, we took on for our strategic plan the Low Stakes Writing Initiative. And we, we did a nice job in many of the areas as far as um, really focusing on are you using this in your classroom? How often are you using it? What strategies are you using it? Um, one of the areas that we said we would do, we did once and then it kind of fell by the wayside as far as putting it in the newsletter and, and really saying, hey, low stakes writing, here's some examples. You could find it in the newsletter, but we didn't actually like highlight it like we said we would. Um, and that brought on a discussion of, okay, how do we do that for next year, um, which I'll talk about shortly. Um, 
And then for the professional culture, what was really interesting is at the end of the year, we talked about, hey, how is low stakes writing for you this year? And let's just have an honest conversation. Um, and they used in the classroom really a lot of low stakes writing, especially when it came time to like brainstorm, drawing and illustrating, exit slips. Those were the things that the teachers liked to use often. When I asked them, well, what do you think you really want to use? Again, they reiterated this brainstorming idea, drawing and illustrating, reflective writing, um, and the KWL charts. What do you know? What do you want to know? What did you learn? Um, and then the big question that I asked to say, you know, did this initiative really work? Did we see improvement in overall writing? And the responses that I got were positive. Um, people remarked that it was less stressful than formal writing. It was easier to do. Um, students in math were able to improve their explanation, written-wise, of their work and their ideas. Um, students had a hard time with comprehension, and they saw an improvement in that. Um, they saw more structured in their writing, such as using transitional words. Um, it increased the flow and idea generation in their classrooms. Um, in math, again, they were really able to explain the why by the end of the year. Um, their explanations were clearer, better thought out. Um, practice leads to growth and experience, which builds their confidence. Um, students became more comfortable putting their ideas on paper. Um, and the list goes on and on. So did, did this initiative work? Yeah, I think it did. And so we really want to take it to the next level for next year and continue our efforts. And that's what the next year's strategic plan is all about. Um, when it comes time to really taking it to the next level, one of the things that key components that we missed is we didn't tell the kids what we're doing and why we're doing it. And I think that's something that we really need to explain to the kids that, hey, low stakes writing, this is what this is, and this is why we're doing it. And you're gonna do it all year long. And that way we'll get a little bit maybe positive buy-in from the kids because they know why they're doing it. Um, Again, we're really gonna try to highlight it in the newsletter. We, we didn't do such a good job for that this year, but next year's another year, and let's focus on that. Um, I think it was one of those deals where we were so focused on, is it working, are we doing it, what kind of things are you doing, that trying to wrap it all up was a little difficult because we were really focused on one area of it. Um, and then also doing the carousel like we did um, midway through the year and sharing it out. That was the important piece that we, we wanted to do and we need to continue doing that, is saying, hey, what did you do in your class? What worked in your class? And have examples so that we as a staff can talk about it. Um, it's nice that when we have department meetings we can talk about these things, but we need to do it as a whole school. And that's what we want to do for January on PD. Anybody have any questions? <clears throat> the um, the discussion, just all of it, uh, obviously it's district-wide. Folks are thinking about how do we use uh, the low stakes writing and, and the attendance, which I think is useful. It's, it's nice to see the consistency. Do you all do, do that as part of uh, administrative meetings, or when, when do you get a chance to talk with, with Denise and Ted and Ted and all? So we have monthly meetings as well um, that I lead every month with the teachers that are one for each grade level. Um, and we talk about what have you been doing, um, showing each other examples of it, and, and talking about it. And as a matter of fact, next Wednesday, our, our meeting, our last meeting of the year is gonna be really focused on, okay, now where do we go with this? What kind of things do we want to do? And I think one of the big things I think we need to do as a district is possibly have a district-wide carousel because you know I was talking to a third grade teacher and they were like hey this is how we put together a paragraph and I was like wow that's really cool and I know a sixth grade teacher that would love that format and and we can learn from each other and I think that's what we need to possibly do district-wide um, is just share out what do we do and steal from each other because we're good thieves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you had uh, a little more money, where would you put it? 
Uh, I would give it to somebody who can be the, the person in charge of curriculum every day. They live it, they breathe it, um, they work. That their only focus is curriculum, and that's it. It's really hard to wear multiple hats. Did you tell him I was going to ask the question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's interesting because Ted sends me to all the district curriculum coordinator meetings that we have in the Blackstone, and that's a wealth of knowledge that I can come back to the district and say, hey, Denise, guess what? We're running some summer programming for elementary school teachers. We have four slots. Can you send anybody? Um, and that's something that we're missing. If it, you know, if I miss a meeting because I have a discipline issue, you know, I can't go. But a person who doesn't have to worry about discipline can just go. That's that's their job. Can can a curriculum director cover two schools, two school districts, four if we do it right? Well, the answer to that is yes. <laughs> you could make that happen. Sure. A lot of staff. Effectively. Yeah. A lot of staff yep. to get That's to know. I'm just curious on your opinion. And it might be also be, I mean, what we're doing here is different than other schools, and that, that's my concern. Is, I mean, it, there could be some good things, because you might be able to have crosstalk where they're doing something great, we could use, and vice versa. But I think that, I think having your own district alone is a huge thing, never mind no. Managing somebody else. Sorry, just a little okay. Ted, what else would you like me to talk about? Oh, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> please talk about life in the middle school this year has been dramatically um, yeah. interesting. I'm just going to highlight it as yeah. this year has been one of the most interesting years um, that I keep falling into things. Um, we brought STEM week with I2 Learning. That was an amazing, amazing, amazing experience for our kids. Um, and we're gonna continue doing that next year. Um, you know, a lot of times it's like, well, it's not in the best week. Okay, well, we'll have to work around that because that's Massachusetts STEM week. We work in Massachusetts. That's when we're going to be doing this. Um, plus, that's part of the stipulation when they send us all of the stuff that we need to carry out STEM week. Writing, again, I've seen a lot of writing as I walk around, mostly it's writing in the classroom. The elective choice for the eighth graders were really uh, a great breath of fresh air for the elective teachers, and I think for the eighth graders. They really were jazzed about, hey, what do you mean? I can take art all year long if I want, and if you can make it work it out, Mr. Goyer, yeah, you can take all art if you want. Um, the, the downside of that, or the casualty of that, is the students were not willing to give up their elective <coughs> for VMS. So VMS was a potential casualty of this elective day. <coughs> um, we're trying advisory this week. Um, from what I see, the kids are relaxed. Um, for that first 25 minutes, Dan went around as well. Um, so that will be, you know, something that came out of the vision committee is that we give kids a break for a little bit during their day where they can just relax, go see a teacher, make up some work if they'd like to so they don't have to stay after school. Um, Midnight Madness was huge this year as well. Um, PTO did a really nice job. Um, they've continued the schedule that we have put together since you know you've been on PTO, where we've done you know four to five a year, and we're consistent about that. Um, I was late because we're Washington DCing um, next Tuesday, so hopefully that will go well. Um, I'm well prepared, and. Uh, It'll be great. Um, the last thing that, unfortunately, it's unofficial, but it's official, is that we are one of six districts that um, successfully got a grant from an organization called ASA, American Student Assistance, where they are looking for programming in middle schools specifically that can um, potentially have kids find a career or find out that that's not the career for them. And so we wrote a, a three-year grant for roughly about $60,000 to set up our um, 
Vanessa Hurley's engineering program, which will tie into the high school project lead the way, which potentially could have a kid come out of the high school and say, well, because of that experience in Mrs. Hurley's class, I really loved engineering and that's all I want to do. Um, so that's going to roll out hopefully a couple of days from now that it'll be official. Sutton Middle School received a three-year grant of 60 grand. Wow, that's great. Hold on. And that would be a curriculum coordinator position person that would strictly be only looking at grants and how to write them and get money into mm -hmm. the, um, the district. Yes, that's I, I think you have, I think you have five way. people here who will support you wholeheartedly on that. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to work a little harder next year to find, find a money. spot to find some money to yeah. fund it. But for the school trip, how many, how's the, what's the interest? Uh, so out of the 130 roughly students, I have 105 going. Terrific. Um, yeah, it should be great. DTL has supported me. Um, local community has supported me. Uh, Mrs. Fields and her hat making skills really helped us um, secure funding for that third bus. Because um, as you know, you can only fit 50 kids on a bus and when you get to 105, you have to turn away five kids. No, that can't happen. Price and we fundraised and uh, we got it together. Terrific. It's, it's and, terrific. and you know, just to share, some of the stuff on the itinerary is really impressive. The kids will get a tour of the Capitol, which is a, a real treat. They'll get to see Arlington National Cemetery, most of the major museums, the monuments. It's yeah. it's going to be a great trip for the kids. The Holocaust Museum, which you have to get tickets for at a certain day, mm -hmm. at a certain time. It was like. Literally, it was like going to Target on Saturday to buy vineyard buy Target. <laughs> Target <laughs> that, <yeah. laughs> it was just Filene's basement crazy. Two examples that will be lost on many people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Jerry. Uh, the next item is the Massachusetts Education Reform Act of 1993 overview. So, really, we kind of focused on one, one, one issue. And now, what's interesting is this has been around now for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And we have people that have come on board into education long after this has been well established. So there was a question about the role of school councils. So you saw a couple examples tonight of the role of school council is they work with the principal to develop the, the, um, the school improvement plan. But there is, there's never been clearly defined, um, you know, what is, the, what is the responsibility, what is the authority of the school council? And so there's originally a controversy arised in part because the language of the act clearly calling for site-based and participatory management process, the Act also states that school councils will serve in an advisory capacity. Very nebulous description. And so the state provided information and, and pamphlets, but there's never really been a clearly defined, and it's more district by district how they view these school councils. Um, in a small district like ours, I see them as vital. I think that mm -hmm. the closer to the epicenter of, of the school, you have parents at the middle and high school level, at least on the high school level you're required to have students, that you want a sounding board, you want to go through, like the attendance policy. You want parents there, you want students there, you want guidance counselors there talking about this. The the question for me, and the things I struggle with at times, is when do I say, yeah, that's, that's a really great idea, but no, <laughs> we're not doing that. And so it's just kind of a nuanced process that where we're small enough where, you know, I can meet with the principals, talk to them about what happens in the school council. I know the issues that they're talking about in school council. Um, there was one, this came up around breathalyzing. That's how this, this topic came to be. And, you know, I think probably about four or five, six years ago, there were a couple of kids that got caught drinking at the prom. 
And so the school council talked about it. They decided that they'd have the kids take a bus and they decided to be on the extra cautious side. They decided we would do random breathalyzing. We talked about it at school committee. We did it the first year. Had you know some parents pushing back about it. I think this either I think this was the second year, and I had a few more parents push back on it. And so it forced me to look introspectively, like because in this particular issue, I'm not. I wasn't in favor of the random breathalyzing. I think if you take a bus to the prom and they walk through a bunch of teachers and police officers, I think that in all likelihood if someone's drinking, you're gonna catch them. Um, and if you suspect someone of drinking or doing something, then you can breathalyze those kids. That was my position, but that was not the position of the school council. So I'm at a crossroads, really, you know, what, what do I do? Do I, and, and by the way, is my opinion the right opinion? You know, I mean, I, there's merit on both sides of the debate. Um, and just because I think it's not right, there were thoughtful people and students in the process. But now you're two years down the road, we haven't had, we had one issue, was caught. Um, so I, I talked to our attorney in this particular case, and. And he said, you are well within your right to randomly breathalyze. And we could do that. But he said, he was under the same mind as I, that if you've already got buses there yeah. and you're going through, he felt like there can be equally legal problems on the other side yeah. <laughs> from a legal standpoint. And so I made the decision that we would not breathalyze unless we suspected someone. But the larger issue for me is the role of school councils. I want to rarely overturn what a school council decides. And I want to be very thoughtful. And if I were to overturn it, I'd like to meet with the school council. I'd like to share with the reasons why I don't support what they're doing. Um, in this case, had I, had I had more time to process it, it was also in the problems here, um, I probably made, would have made plans to go visit with the school council and talk through it with the latest school council. Um, at, at what point something doesn't doesn't something like breathalyzing become a policy, and <clears throat> and is outside of the is is within the scope of the school committee, and not a school council, and 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 for that matter, anything that comes out of a school council. I mean, who, yeah, you, you've got to make the decision whether this is a policy, right. or you know, or, 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 or they can be they, or, procedure. or procedure. And are they making suggestions for things? Um, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I think it, that's it where you. Yeah, I feel the same way. The I mean, part it's a suggestion versus on. you're actually acting on it. So if you're acting on it, then isn't it? To me, that's policy. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the current policies. I haven't looked at the current policies around, because we have policies, and, and you know we can look at that up. We'll, we'll look Which at that right. this week. The handbooks have attendance in it. Now, we approved the handbook, but mm -hmm. certainly I would think that we just heard today was changes to a handbook or to attendance policies. Correct. Mm -hmm. However, it did come to the school committee, and the school committee had the opportunity right. to say, yeah. No, we'll we don't approve the handbook. But on something on the breathalyzer, if, if no. that's a, you know, is that a policy or not, no. that didn't get to the school committee to determine, yeah. if, to determine if that's what the school's going to do or not. I think it was brought to us, yeah, it was. but it wasn't, it was more informative. Yeah. You know, and I think at that point, I think as a school committee, we could have said, well, we're not really on board with that. We, I, I tend to look at the school council and appreciate the job that they do. That being said, sometimes a school council can be comprised of, you know, specifically like-minded individuals that have a certain view that might not represent the community as a whole. Like the be part of <laughs> <laughs> so, to answer your question, though, Bruce, you you can set policy. You could yeah. say we want to look at our breathalyzing policy, which exists, and I probably should have read it before, but I was I was more yeah. interested in the school council role, but you can go and say, 
this is the policy that will that we breathalyze under suspicion only. No, I, I yeah. understand that. What I'm saying is, <coughs> the way the way I heard this, and the way it appears to me that this came about was, the school council said, we're gonna we're gonna have random breathalyzing done on kids attending the prom. To me, that's a policy. That's yeah. I don't I I have, a, I have a real issue if that's what a school council is going to make decisions, decisions that way. Yeah. I think that's a school they're, committee they're item. They're advisory. Exactly. That's not. An, well, that was the debate. That that's I just not a bit of it. Yeah, yeah advice. Role. So I don't think they don't have the ultimate right to make the decision. Well, and they have the right to put forth their suggestion, which and, that to me is advisory. Their recommendations. To the principal. Right, and but the they don't ultimately get to act on it. Right. So they, that, if you that's feel what like I see. It needs further discussion. You can bring it to us. To well, us, but, yeah. but I, I guess I disagree a little bit, Nate, with your recollection. Because my recollection is that before it occurred, it did come to the committee. Yeah. We yeah. did discuss it, and we very much could have at that time said that that's crossed into policy, mm -hmm. and we want to revisit it. We 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 would have had an opportunity at that at that time. It was 100% brought by Mr. McCarthy. We went over it in great detail. Yeah. And again, yeah. it could have been a meeting where you know we're not thinking about okay, should we be looking at the policy at this time? Yeah. It was mm -hmm. just. It, but there's going to be things that occur that cross into the policy space. It's, it's mm -hmm. um, when they're not controversial, I, I don't think it pops up, right? That. I mean that's, but I think that's y your job. You have to be the filter on that and say this is a policy that needs to come through the school committee. I mean, if it's that's I'll one of our you roles, correct? Policy on breathalyzing. Yeah, and, well, and also is, what, this what's is any goal? policy, not just yeah. breathalyzing. No, 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 I know, but, but, but yeah. what what you have policy, and then you have procedure. procedure. Mm -hmm. So if you have a policy that outlines in general terms breathalyzing. Then you set procedures, procedures at the school level based on the policy. And so, you know, something that we need to probably think about is okay, something this comes up, we should have the policy there at the same time. And, and it's just maybe a little bit more thought, more thought on my part that says, okay, we're, we're talking about something that has a policy. Let's make sure that we fall in line with the policy, that it doesn't overstep the role of the policy. My concern with that is. <clears throat> if the policy is that we have the ability to breathalyze, then there's the argument that says the procedure is we're going to randomly breathalyze kids attending the prom. And to be honest, I have a huge issue with that. I do too. Yeah. That flies in the face of everything we tell our kids. Yeah. So I'm looking at that as an example. <laughs> it's a good example. An example of what we should be talking about at school committee mm -hmm. and that we did talk about it two years ago when it was started and um, but so part of the problem that I had is again procedure I mean just looking procedural if if we're gonna have people volunteer to be on committees and they give recommendations to the principal and they're thoughtful about it I just want to make sure that I respect that and probably do a better job of bringing to the school committee, okay, this is something that we probably need to talk and flush out a little bit more from the policy perspective. Okay, but we did that in this example. We did. I'd like to see the policy then. Because I, I went through the policies and I didn't find it. So there was a discussion about it. It's, it's in minutes. Was it written into policy, the policy manual? Perhaps not. So is the question, what makes policy? Or in this particular case, did it come close enough to policy that it was actually reviewed by the committee? And shouldn't that I be more clear to everybody no. when we're doing yeah. it? Yeah. Well, no, because I remember the discussion. I think we as school committee, we missed, our op we missed an opportunity at that point to say, maybe we should set this as policy. We did discuss it. I do remember yeah. uh, Mr. McCarthy coming in talking about it, and at the time, I think it was a school council recommendation. Okay, I remember being okay with that, but now as we discuss it, yeah, 
as a committee, we probably should have said, should we put this in policy? Well, I, I mean, that's on us, I think. It's on the summer retreat list. All right. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Well, I would say that um, it, it's the bigger picture. It's not this one issue. This one issue brought it to light, but it's if we're going to ask people to be part of our school district and volunteer and become part of our community, we want to make sure that the, we, we value their input. And part of our job is to filter it a little bit and make sure that we, that it stays. And, and, and by the way, most of it is just around normal stuff. Attendance, maybe some discipline, you know, like, uh, or, or approving the, the school improvement plan. Um, so it's generally at the Early Learning Center going to be Early Learning Center little kid stuff. Um, the more controversial things as you go through the system um, is what we need to be maybe a little bit more focused on. Anybody feel the need for more discussion? Moving along to the district survey subcommittee. I, I will say, I look this article I share with you, Gretchen Rossman was my professor at UMass, and so I sent her an email. But I liked reading this because, you know, it's been a long time since I've actually looked at all of the pieces of the Ed Reform Act. So, um, you know, it's almost time now, that it's similar to us needing a new s strategic plan, mm -hmm. I think the state's going to be looking at a new, a new Ed Reform Act soon enough. <coughs> Next item is the district survey subcommittee update from um, Kristen and Peter. Um, so the direction of the survey this time around is going to be a little bit more focused on the meetings we had with the vision committee, talking more about the direction of the school, additions to the school, changes in the school, rather than asking how we doing on this, how we doing on that. I agree, disagree, that kind of thing. Um, so the questions here are going to be more looking for input on the direction parents and students would like to see. Um, there's room for staff. There's room for residents without children in the school system to make suggestions. Survey for the kids. That's Which is part of the I part of the plan too. Is thing. maybe something that would go home potentially with. Um, maybe our middle schoolers, elementary schoolers, and Simonian Center that they might answer with their parents um, if the kids aren't comfortable doing it on their own or too young or whatever. What I would suggest is that have, <laughs> have, have really, like I gave the suggestions to the school, but certainly Miss Merriam would probably be better adept with her staff how best to ask little kids to answer a survey you know, and have them kind of design it in kid-friendly language. Yep. Same thing at the elementary school. Middle and high school are much easier. The kids are older, you can give them a, a, a survey. They've already done it at the high school. So those are easy to, to do. Yeah, and I think it's it's a great, great opportunity for, for a parent to ask their children a, a little more in depth about their school and things that they experience. And you know, I know, I know as a parent, a lot of the information I get is, how was school today? Great. What happened? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you know, it, and it's, it's just a way to kind of open the door for a discussion. Maybe, maybe after the survey's done, there's a little bit more discussion around the dinner table about the school rather than just, you know, who got sent to the principal or whatever they... Maybe, that's a, maybe that's a survey question. Do you discuss school at the dinner table? Dinner table. But I think this <laughs> is also a way to get, <laughs> to get kids and parents more active in what's happening with the school. Yep, and 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 if they feel like it, I mean, it's important, th this this education is for them. They need to have uh, feel like they have a stake in it, and I think that that's why it's really important yep. to ask. I think I think the high school questions is that right? right? Three through seven are for the for the uh, parents. Just yeah, open we don't open ended questions. The the this, <laughs> there's a, there's work to be done on what yeah. we might do for the students themselves. I'm, I'm wondering on on the parents the way the way I read it it looks like you say give me a sense of where you're where you're coming from and then you ask what would you like to see for each of the different schools the box maybe I'm misreading it yeah yeah S 
So I, I guess I'm just a, a little concerned that there would be a fair number of parents who answer my child is in and then says, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So, I mean, that's that's a helpful response, that's too, because that goes to then we need to know, we need, it, it tells us we need to do a better job in communicating mm -hmm. certain things. And engaging parents, yeah. So, and we have to create sense. some more, exactly, avenues to engage parents, other than the robocalls on some kid <laughs> running a, 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 a fundraiser for a charity, but... I think, I think I think this is a, is a beginning, and it's more about the direction of the questions rather than yep. the actual questions, questions at this point. So we're still kind of yes. trying to flesh it out a little bit. But um, what do you think? <coughs> what do you think we can expect for a release date? You have a idea on that? We can send it out whenever. I mean, when we met, we just talked about what we're looking for is ideas how to move the district forward, not ask the same questions we've asked historically and we get the same percentages back and we get... We get top end and low end and nothing from the middle. And so we thought if we just left it open-ended, programs, ideas, which will lead us into the strategic plan work next, next year, that maybe we would... And some of this can even fuel district and vision. Well, that's exactly yeah, what it'll do. Which but th this is yeah, this is why that's so important. Is th this is it's it's community involvement. It's it's everybody. Everybody has a stake in this, and and it's huge. I want everybody to be excited about learning. So the fact that we're looking for new ideas and new pathways of doing things, I think, is a great opportunity for everybody out there. Now people can complain all they want, but what are you going to do to fix it? Here's a chance. Here's your chance to tell us how we can make it better. And, and especially for the for the younger kids to, to have an understanding that administration and school committee that we're interested in everyone's input yeah. finding that out very young and maybe it makes them speak up a little bit more around the school too yeah your your reports valued it doesn't matter who you are I think the high school students understand that they can speak up mm -hmm. but I don't know how many do plenty <laughs> <laughs> So when do we expect to be able to send this out? What? Well, because we like to have it back for the retreat. Oh, I, I think we need to send it out this month. You know, I'm looking at. Are you a parent, a staff member? With what schools your child attend, and then my thought is we're just asking suggestions for each school and the overall district. And, and if you think that that's sufficient, we can get this out this week. Can Survey Monkey? Um, follow like if you click I'm a, my son attends the middle school can it can the follow up question be a middle school question middle, yeah that's middle can school. you tweak it to or, or is it going to be one general see I would rather have so you have someone who has a student in the middle school mm -hmm. but they went through the early learning center in the elementary yep. and they have ideas that they'd like to share and vice versa so, so we're also able to click multiple ones or are we completing one survey per student or is it that if you've got somebody in each of the four schools you can click all four schools you can go and answer all okay all I just want to make sure and that's that a different answer to her question though no. uh, on question number two, two do you have to choose one answer no. so we have the opportunity to get check all yeah I got a kid in each yeah. yeah. Was yep. that one family that I <laughs> I've had to <laughs> had a child in every school. But, I got but that's okay too <laughs> yes. because now we know. Right. And now we know. Yeah. 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 That was always a hard part in the past. You know, which school or do you do a separate, separate survey for yeah. each kid in each school? Well and in the, in and the past you weren't able to do multiple. So I don't know whether Survey one. Monkey has changed or um, I because if we can do multiple. Because if I we think could that's how I set it up. I'll double check. Okay. That'd, that'd be Just a great. checkbox versus a radio Because box. if you're in that mindset, I, I think it's great instead of saying, well, oh, by the way, we want you to fill out three more surveys because the, I mean, the if they're already there, we've got them. The mindset is moving forward, mm -hmm. not thinking about what's right. happened in the past. Yeah, and we want, and, and then thinking. there was a question about doing some incentive. Mm -hmm. And so we could ask if parents would like to you know, do some type of incentive to get them to fill out the survey, you know, 
you could, you, you know, well, I, random drawing for a Sutton Sutton shirt apparel, or Sutton, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, or something like that to maybe get people to fill out the survey. Yep. Is this an anonymous survey? Well, it, it is, but at the end, if you want to, if you want to be in the raffle, y you can choose to just put your email in. You're right. It is an anonymous survey, hmm. but we were trying to think of different ways yeah. to get more responses. I so if you teased it with the the line of the, you know, I just yeah. and I all the surveys, the number of people I've bumped in is that they're checking out who I am, and I think yeah. they really aren't. I don't know that you want to lead it anyway. Yeah. I, I, I like the idea. I don't like the implementation in that survey in any way, shape, or form. There being an indication that we we know who you are. Me? Yeah, I don't know how you could. We, I've been trying to think of, of a way. You know, unless you, unless each response gets tagged with a number. Number. Yep. And at the end, you have to send a. <laughs> yeah, but then people have to. That's, that's, still hard. that's the only uh, yeah, the only uh, way to yeah. ensure and You'd be better off saying if you want to identify. But yourself. but hopefully people feel comfortable enough saying this. You know, maybe maybe it is you asked for their name at the end. Oh, I'd love to see it. It, it. That's another thing. Is that people are comfortable enough making recommendations of how we can improve this system? I'd love for somebody to come up and say, you can "Yeah, say, that was you mine." You know what? You I, can say, yeah. "If you would like to share your name, yep. you are. You can enter into the drawing." Drawing, absolutely. You could say something as general. You might get nobody. You might get half the people, and right. and you put those names all on a piece of paper and you draw them out of a hat, and somebody wins a free sweatshirt. Yeah, and, and bottom line is, if somebody's it's filling out these surveys just to Only complain. Medium. <laughs> I think the fact that we're asking them for their input and, and positive ideas might stop them in their tracks, and they're not going to. I think this is going to be more positive. Yeah. You'll yeah. always get a few people that take an opportunity to maybe, but I just need guidance from all of you. If you're comfortable with these six questions, we'll go out to the general public with the six main questions. Um, I don't know we're not. We're not doing. I agree. I disagree. These are this empty box. boxes to write in. Boxes. And we're, hoping, box. we're hoping for concrete feedback. Not. Yeah. I disagree. Yeah. Strongly yeah. disagree. The internship is not great applicable. program. I'd love to see this added to it. Right. Wow. Yeah. We also have to be aware when we get the results that we take out any names that get. Of course. Yes. Put in them. Yeah. Yep. Before we the results may, get released. We might released. want to put that in the head. But I. But I don't. Too. Well, we could put in. Please don't use names. Yeah. Specific. But, but yeah. this is this is a different kind of survey. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's, but it's still if you, someone you does put a name yeah. in, we've got to make sure that so name gets purged yeah. before the results get. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it would be a great idea. This, but don't let that. Person that yeah, do don't it. let so -so if, do it. If, yeah. if, if I'm no, unhappy, no, no, <laughs> keep that well, away it'll from be there. Yeah. It'll be there. So I think it's great that you got a positive thought, but you can also imagine somebody would say, "What new ideas? I have a new idea that we don't do that anymore." Right? I have a new idea that Mrs. Jones. Not ever do that again. <laughs> That's right. fine too. Yeah. I, no but as soon as it says Mrs. Jones, yeah. please refrain from right. using yeah. individual and names. And regardless of asking for that before it gets distributed, it's got to be. We'll, get, we'll, yeah. we'll redact anything as well. Yep. Lesson learned. <laughs> I don't so think we need a we don't have motion on this, do we? <laughs> no, we don't. No motion. She never liked you. If we're good, then put her on the list. Yeah, we should be good. Out. Yep. Then I'm gonna we put it out. I don't think it, there's nothing that requires a motion, but if nope. people are comfortable nope. with this, let's. All right. Proceed. We'll send it out one final time. We'll send you guys the survey first. If you see anything or any changes, just let us yep. know, and then we'll send it out to everybody. Okay. It's a departure. You know, I think yeah. I just want to see what how it how it's received. Okay. It's not, it's not gonna be your average survey. No. Okay. Hopefully, it'll be a breath of fresh air for a lot of people. Free sweatshirt. Yeah. <laughs> Whose budgets are coming out? The uh, next item is the second reading of okay. policy EEAG, which is student transportation and private vehicles. I love I think the changes are very. So, this cleans up, in my opinion, cleans up the language for us. So when practice is at the soccer field, we're not requesting or requiring anybody to drive them. Kids can make their own arrangements. If you're going to a golf match, you can make your own arrangements. So I think it cleans up the language very clearly, for me anyway. Yeah. I just want people to know that if 
that if students or anybody's driving students, something happens, that's that's not the school's insurance, that's not the town's insurance. Yeah. It's gonna be on yeah, you. I mean, there's one little grammar thing in here, the there. Again, I mean, if we're referring to any person, last last red paragraph you've got there. So any person who agrees to transport a student, blah, 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 at, and it says there. There. Second, second yep. sentence in that paragraph. Right here. Right here. Do I need to point it out to you? Am I, am I in the red? Or up yeah. in the top? Yeah. You're yep. in the red. First, in the first red sentence. Paragraph. Two lines it's down, second word. Second word in. And you think it should be? There. Oh, they're the yeah. plural. Are they yeah. personal? Yeah. We need agreement there. His slash her. His or her? Yeah, his mm -hmm. or One's so own that's risk. Not grammatically you could put if ones. Yes, if we put ones so own, then, that's then not right. there is yeah, it's no. It is that is total non third gender. Yeah, that's binary. Oh. So <laughs> it's ones. But ones, ones is fine without What's the saying with his or her or going to non. How about at that person's? Oh. Yeah, that person. One's own risk. That's what one's own risk. Which is What's that's you're there? in agreement. I don't, yeah. I, I don't know. Why, old school. Why is there? That's the question. Why is that? Why? Is, what is <laughs> the the there? there there's not an agreement there between any person and there. You okay. shouldn't. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, no. say. Grammatically incorrect. One's own risk. One one's, <laughs> one's own risk. Yeah, Perfect. I'm fine with that. Okay. okay. Our school system should be putting on grammatically correct stuff. <laughs> have you read the survey? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have. <laughs> yes. Pete, we went to school together. <laughs> okay. Um, there's no motion needed. Is there? So we'll have this third reading at the next meeting. Fine. Yep. Okay. And then the next item is the uh, third reading and adoption of policies. DBJ, which is Budget Transfer Authority, DD, Funding Proposals and Applications, DGA, Authorized Signatures, DH, Bonded Employees and Officers, and JJF, Student Activity Accounts. We have a motion. So moved. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Floor is open for discussion. There was none. Hearing none. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor of adoption of those five Aye. policies? Aye. Aye. Looks good. Okay. Next item is the superintendent's update. Okay. Uh, I just want to let the committee know that I did post for the two uh, early learning center pr uh, positions as anticipated. We haven't finalized the budget, but I put those out there so we can start gathering resumes, and we have to make a final decision in early <coughs> June. It, is, it would be my recommendation that we add those two positions. Um, another, uh, you know, the in internship fair today was just spectacular. If you went, um, it was, it's amazing what the experiences these kids have mm. and, and the opportunities that they have. And um, it, re it tells us that we need to find more of that at earlier ages so that kids are coming to an understanding of what happens out after school in their lives. But tremendous. We are, I can't tell you, people from other towns, educators, curriculum folks coming, tapping Sergio on the shoulder, talking about how they got this off the ground because more than 90% of our students are participating. It's phenomenal. Um, AP testing wrapped up uh, on Friday. Um, Roger's scheduled to come in at our next meeting. He can talk about what came out of the capital plan, which was a lot for our school, awesome. a lot. And so, you know, in the back of the building, it's chiller, so we're waiting on the Greens Community Grant to come in to cover the other half of that. Um, we're gonna have a lot of, you know, if all this goes through, the green communities, we're going to have updated water heaters. Well, we already put one in, 
So those are definitely happening. Those are the big items. The chiller is a $250,000 upgrade, much more energy efficient, about two thirds the size of the current unit. So that's gonna save us electricity. Um, you know, hopefully paving in front of the school. We put it out to bid again. We do have people bidding on it. Um, I mean, it's just, I mean, the oil delivery system in the back, the pump that we've been asking for for years, that got through, I mean, over $600,000 in capital improvements in the capital fund. So thank you, town. Thank you for the vote. It was a little awkward sitting there, and, and the school's going to get this, and the school's going to get this. I'm like, how about throwing the police in then? How about a, yeah. how about the fire truck? I mean, they're getting 850. I mean, they're, they're one fire truck. And again, you think but about it's it. it's also important to maintain our schools. That's Absolutely. It's the biggest it's asset in the town. What was that? It's the biggest, the biggest asset, asset in the town. Yes. Uh, agreed. And they're doing um, tomorrow. Uh, Roger is scheduled to have the manufacturers and our HVAC company on the roof tomorrow when we get our, an, our whole air conditioning condition air systems up and running. We've had problems every year, condensers have mm -hmm. blown and compressors have blown. We want everybody there when we get it up and running so that we make sure that everything is designed properly. Um, a contractor for the wastewater tank met with Roger and Whitewater this past week, and they will be giving us a quote for re refurbishing the tank. So that's another thing that the town is going to have to look at. Uh, this week, um, on Thursday, the third grade Memorial Day concert is at 9 a.m., and the fourth grade concert is at 10 a.m. The senior reception is next Tuesday, uh, the 28th. And that's always a great night, very sad night for many parents. Also a very happy night for many parents. <laughs> uh, graduation Sunday, um, or, um, June 2nd. SEFT has granted us a $15,000 grant uh, to train. And, and what I'll do is I'll have the, the three people that are taking the 200-hour course in Breathe for Change, I'll invite them to a school committee meeting early fall to talk about this program. But we, if the SEPT is funding up to 30 staff members to attend a two-day training in October. It's all about how to, for teachers to take care of themselves, because if they're not taking care of themselves, mm -hmm. it's hard to take care of children, but then also transfer into kids about ways to relax during the day, breathing exercises, simple yoga techniques, and other things. We don't have a district-wide approach to managing the stresses of a day and we're hoping that with this grant and getting a bulk of a, a large chunk of the staff trained we have a lot of interest uh, the staff will have to give up a Saturday of Columbus Day weekend so it'll be the Friday of PD on in October and then the Saturday two 10-hour days I'll have Ann and Cindy and Michelle the three staff members that brought it to us I'll have them come and speak to us in, in in September for that, so Dad, if you can remember to remind me of that. I just want to talk about the strategic plan, and I'm I schedule a, a full day retreat with the administrators. I think it's June 18th, and what we're going to do is we're going to first look at what were the prioritized recommendations, what were the recommendations that came out of the vision committee, and we're going to want to prioritize kind of that list and why we're why we're going down this path. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to, roll, we're going to review enrollment. And not enrollment today, but projecting out enrollment three years from now and six years from now. Because I think when we do that, the next discussion is in light of, this in light of the enrollment, we have, some, we have to do some thinking about the structure of our school district. Um, and then also have a discussion about personnel and how we meet what we want to meet through the vision committee and the strategic planning committee. If you have average class sizes of 100 students across the district in four or five years, the question becomes, should we have four schools or should we have three schools? And, and what would that look like? And how do you share personnel better across, acro 
across grades. And then, so as an example, you could have pre-K to grade three, grades four to seven is your middle school, and grades eight through 12 are your high school. And, and the reason why I say eight to 12 in the high school is your, certificate, your certifications at high school are all eight to 12. So you have to look at certifications. Now I'm not saying we're gonna do this, but we have to, and the reason why I say this, our budget goes up between six and $700,000 a year without adding really anything. Maybe, you know, we added a half of teaching position if we don't add the curriculum. But salaries go up, bus contracts go up, uh, and we receive $400,000 from town on average, and hopefully that'll continue, and maybe forty dollars or $50,000 from the state. Every year we're starting in the hole. If we want to match our work to what the vision committee spoke about, we're going to have to relook at how we how we staff our school district. And so I'm going to have that conversation with the administrators. I think that's a conversation that we're going to also have to have with the school committee at the summer retreat. It's <coughs> not going to change next year. We've done a lot of changes for next year. So we've got to do two things. One is you got to start with the vision and start with the strategic plan for learning, for teaching and learning. But then with that, how, we do, how do we pay for it? And how do we... If we, if we really want these things, then something else has to go. And uh, the structure may change. I think where you will have had time with, with the administrators, I, I think it's time well spent on the agenda mm -hmm. in the summer if, if, you t if, if we think about vision strategy as well. I know we've had a lot of conversations about that, mm -hmm. but I think that's sort of at a higher level where you're not making any decisions, but, but just Kicking around. Kicking well, the around. first thing yeah. I think of is we're always talking about the drop off with the eighth graders going into high school. The eighth graders are, are in high school. They're more likely to, less are likely to run, run away or go elsewhere. Or, you know, once you're integrated you into that school, you get to know the teachers, you get to know the other upperclassmen. Yeah. I'd be really curious to, to kick it around. And yeah. And yeah. yeah. Oh, so, on the summer retreat. so I, I just want to mention that, that that's, and then I think what we need to do is. Um, hire a professional person to come in and lead our strategic plan work next year. Um, I've gotten a couple of names of people from um, from Mendon Upton that did this process last year. We just did it nine years ago, and it's time. The world has changed. Mm -hmm. Nine years ago, I don't think everybody had a smartphone nine years ago, but maybe they did. No, I didn't. I, I don't think I, I had a smartphone then. Uh, the world is changing rapidly, but we have to be we have to anticipate <coughs> three years out and six years out and have a plan. It affects hiring, it affects how we distribute staffing. So it's just something that I think we need to spend, I mean, that's really the work that we need to spend time talking about. And that's all I have at this time. Any new business ac agenda items or action items? From I would just remind people that next Tuesday, a week from tomorrow, is town election. So please yep. participate. I have two things for the committee. One is um, we all got um, the superintendent's evaluation. Evaluation. Um, let's see if we can get those in. Um, and the other one is if you have ideas, other ideas for the summer retreat, um, send them along to die. Okay. Um, so that we can at least get a an idea. I've got a list going from notes I've taken during the year about things we talked about. But if there's anything else that pops up, send I a note so that we can get it on the list. How, m how many yeah. days is the summer retreat? Four, <laughs> four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got a pretty good size Just, list. It's gonna, we're going to all watch Brad Marchand's interview with 18 questions and 39 words to respond. <laughs> and, and we'll handle it that way. So, And I do echo your uh, comments. This was the first... Um, um, of the um, internship fairs that I've been to. <coughs> and <coughs> what impressed me most was to see, um, I walked by two booths where um, kids were off site and people from wherever they were interning were there to, to see it. Um, I know three of the Sutton police officers came because we had uh, a student up there. Um, my son was with Senator Fatman, and three he people there. from his, yeah. Ryan was there, but three people from his office 
that, uh, that Patrick worked with showed up. So there's an awful lot of people from the outside that have interest. It's yeah. Oh yeah, it's 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 a great program. We uh, we're leading the way. We're getting a lot of yeah. copycats. I was I was there just for the very end, and um, when they finish it all up and they pull all the kids together and you see them all yeah. in one group, how many of them are actually participating? That's when the number really hits you. Like it's a it's a big big group of kids. And it was great to have all the underclassmen. Yeah. come through and see it so they know what's coming and the energy. Anytime One of the things I enjoyed a great deal is coming in at 1030 and driving through that back parking lot. What, you had all the teachers park back there? To have all those spots open, it was like, yeah, we need more visitor spots. <laughs> yes, that was <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> to actually find yeah, we to we need to paint a couple more visitor spots. Yep. That, um, you know, just uh, talking with a lot of the students and hearing the stuff they learn and then talking with some of the employees that were there with them, you could tell it was mutually beneficial. You know, I, I talked to one kid and he, he worked with his dad. And, oh, yeah, um, you know, it was, it was quite interesting because he told us he helped, his dad owns a, a, graphic, a graphic design business and he helped his dad get on social media. Mm -hmm. So it actually turned out that they, they both mutually benefited substantially. And then a, another girl was working with a local um, rehab facility, if you will. And uh, you know the the person that helped employ her, she had recognized her interest lied more with nursing, so she aligned her with the and, and forgive me if I get the term wrong, but director of nursing, for the facility to help align the student and just to see the amount of care from these businesses, parents, that go in to try to make these students get a genuine learning experience, and and what the kids get out of it, it's it's one of my favorite things that we do in the high school and. I, I can't say thank you enough to Sergio mm -hmm. and team for all that they do and uh, really outstanding. So thank I, you. I will say this. <coughs> it's also about the students. You can do these programs and if you're not sending students that go in and take it seriously and show genuine interest, the employers wouldn't come back. Um, I know uh, an, uh, an electrician in town, he got an intern last year kids working for him now full-time and, and going to become an electrician. And he was planning on going to college, and he said, why am I going to college? I, this is, I love this. This is what I want to do. Um, but we, we send great kids, um, and they go in, and they, they take it seriously, and they do a great job. So kudos to our students as well. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything else? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect.